Fedora version 43 was released on October 28th. We'll evaluate it by downloading the image from its website. The workstation version was selected. While booting the live environment, we learned that Fedora originated in the United States as a continuation of Red Hat, but is now the development base. We proceed with the installation, configuring the language, keyboard layout, selecting the disk, and choosing how Fedora will be installed on that disk. In fact, it's not only the development base for Red Hat, but also for CentOS, although the latter is currently considered an intermediate option. Upon first booting the system, the language, keyboard, and location settings are confirmed, and the username and password are created. Once logged in, we proceed to view the installed packages, which are those installed by default with the GNOME desktop. We open the terminal. The first drawback, in my opinion, is that it doesn't recognize the Wi-Fi adapter, which most distributions, including those with similar kernels, do. Since it wasn't even recognized as a USB device, we proceeded to use an Ethernet connection with USB, although the drivers weren't efficient. The second negative point occurred. I'm installing on the 28th, and Fedora needs an update of almost 1 GB. It should be the most up-to-date version. After completing the tedious and pointless update, we proceeded to install FastFetch and Sysbench, which will be used for the evaluation. We ran the FastFetch command to see general data such as kernel, packages, desktop environment, window manager, and memory and disk usage. Using commands, we displayed the same information, but testing for error Y2038 and running system D analyzed to see the system boot time. We performed the sysbench tests carefully, starting with the CPU to measure computing power, and then with the memory to evaluate its overall speed. Now we evaluated disk performance and ran thread and mutex tests to assess simultaneous execution and concurrent resources. Now, we use the top command to actively monitor and track memory consumption while Firefox is running and open in a single window on the system. Then, a second tab containing a video is opened, followed by a third tab, and finally a fourth tab is simultaneously opened on the browser. With that, we finished the tests. Now we will analyze the results to give an opinion on the new version of the distribution we evaluated. Fedora 43 uses kernel 6.17.1, installed 1990 packages, uses GNOME 49.1, and Mutter with Wayland. The kernel and GNOME are both up to date. The initial system memory is 2.04 GB, which is high compared to other distributions, and the disk space is 4.71 GB, which is normal. It does support the Y2038 bug, and the boot time was almost 37 seconds, which is definitely a point in Fedora's favor. Overall, it's very fast. Regarding CPU performance in both single-threaded and multi-threaded applications, Fedora scores low compared to other distributions with similar hardware. The results for threads and mutexes are also quite low, in fact being the lowest among all the Linux distributions that we have tested on this channel so far. Memory read and write speeds are still quite good overall, especially when compared to the other Linux distributions that we have thoroughly tested. The average memory consumption per Firefox window is moderate, being surpassed only by Q4 OS Trinity and Linux Mint Jiggy in terms of efficiency. Disk read and write speeds represent the third weakest point in our evaluation, with Fedora's performance reaching only about a third of the speed in most other Linux distributions. In conclusion, I was very excited to try the distribution on launch day, but I believe that issues such as compatibility, the outdated ISO image, and poor disk management are points that should have been addressed prior to release. That's all for now. We will continue evaluating other Linux distributions in future videos. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. See you next time.